So I finally got a chance to really see the PlayStation 4 user interface in action, and I have come away very happy with what I saw. Just so you know, I was never a fan of the cross-media bar. I thought even for people that were hardcore, that it was not very good to look at. It was still very hard to navigate. And for those that were a little more casual, it was completely opaque. All of that has been addressed in something that is aesthetically pleasing. It's really nice to look at the home screen for the PlayStation 4, but moreover, it's easy and logical the way that you move through it. Um, we, we saw many different types of assets. One of them is what they seem to be pushing quite heavily, which are social um, abilities inside of the PlayStation 4, primarily seeing what your friends are doing with an activity list. Um, it was nice to see how and what your friends were doing, but the way that it did roll out seemed a little bit messy. It's probably the one thing I really didn't care for that much is just kind of this long list of all these different friends and what they've been doing. There was no way to sort of look at it from a categorical point of view or from a discoverable point of view. If I want to go play a game with a friend of mine, and that, you would have to go through uh, your, your friends menu to be able to find someone that specific. Now the main menu is just a list of all the things that you have on the device. The most recent game you've been playing would be first on that list and then the second most recent game. It's all very sensible, very logical, and very easy to read. Navigate through the various sections uh, was quick, was easy, and really speed is at the core of what's happening with this OS. Moving from game to another facet of, of the PlayStation 4 was very, very fast. It was very appealing, and it was actually quite eye-opening to see everything work that quickly. Um, another thing which they have not talked about at all, which I was quite surprised by, was uh, what the PlayStation Eye can do. It's now called the PlayStation 4 camera. Um, it has voice commands, just like the Kinect, and you can use that to navigate through the OS, um, as well as uh, it can definitely read a lot of what the character is doing. It actually can recognize your face, just like the Kinect can, and it use, it's used as a camera as you stream stuff out to either use stream or to Twitch. Now, once again, that's something that they've been hitting on, which is that share button. Um, it's remarkable how easy it is to isolate a clip from the game you've been playing, uh, edit it down, and then send it out. Now, when you send it out, it can only go to Facebook or within the PlayStation 4 environment, so they are a little bit limited there. Screen Screenshots can also go to Twitter, but it sounds like they're going to need to expand that so that you really can be as shareable as you possibly can. Now, uh, in, in terms of streaming, you can send that to Ustream or Twitch. Uh, it, it, it's, it's there. I don't know how much people are going to take advantage of it. I think, once again, the breadth and the reach of it's really going to determine how that facet of it grows. But it's also something that you can completely ignore as it has nothing to do with your playing your games. It's just telling other people and showing other people how you're playing those games. One of the things I was quite taken aback by is when you are doing the stream, when you're live streaming your session, you can see the comments coming through. You can also turn it off if you don't want to have the joy of uh, commenters just talking about how well you're playing a game. But that sense of interactivity, that's really interesting and I think there's a lot of potential for growth there and for an interesting community to start to band around inside of the PlayStation 4. Now the PlayStation Store, this was really remarkable. Um, it looks a lot like the PS3 Store except it's native to the PlayStation 4. You're not going through that arduous process of loading something up. It's right there, it's very easy to access, and you can you know, buy a game, and most importantly, you can start playing almost any game once you start downloading it. Uh, in the case of Call of Duty Ghost, it gives you the option to choose to start to play multiplayer or to play single player, and this is going to be true for all games except for incredibly small games that are like 200 megs because really there's no waiting there in the first place. Um, that is a huge leap forward. I think that it's, it's really inviting people to think about making digital purchases. One of the key issues I had is given the 500 meg hard drive and, you know, Killzone is about 40 plus gigs, how many games can you keep on that hard drive? If you do choose to uninstall, it will not uninstall your saves. You'll have all of that both in the cloud and on the system, so you just have to go through the process of re-downloading it again. Yes, it might be a little annoying, but it's nowhere near as dramatic as having to restart a game completely if you choose to uninstall it and then reinstall at a later time. So, uh, just so you know, I've only had a very, very short period of time, so these are some very initial thoughts, but mainly I am just so happy to see a UI that is such a massive improvement. It's not just an improvement over the XMB. This is an improvement with clearly an eye toward objectives that they want to reach years down the line. I don't know if it's absolutely perfect. I bet there's something hidden in there that I haven't discovered yet. We will be trying it out over the next couple weeks and getting back to you about our thoughts, opinions, and advice. All right, we're going to have a ton more PlayStation 4 coverage, so keep on looking for it. It should already be there, and there's more to come.